So thank you for the uh, invitation. Um, let me start with this uh, diagram. This is indeed a child's uh, drawing. And uh, since it is uh, not really important, I'll be raising in a minute. So uh, we've been hearing about uh, topological recursion in this uh, conference from spectral curves. You get uh, uh, invariants that uh, an of uh, discovered. Then many of them are indeed quantum invariants, like a Gromov Witten, Donaldson Thomas, either Witten, or not invariants. Um, but then I'd like to start from here. If you do have certain invariants, the concept is defined, but you want to calculate. Often what you do is to consider certain generating functions, and then uh, try to find a finite order differential or a finite depth difference or a mixture of the, these equations um, to find the quantum, what uh, 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 people call quantum curves. So uh, Aganagic, uh, Digraph, Krem, uh, Marino, Waffa, uh, Gukov, Sukovsky, and Marino, um, um, Grassi, Hatsuda, Marino, and so on. So these people uh, discovered the concept of quantum curves, which are indeed uh, um, operators in which the certain generating functions of these invariants are in the kernel. And then from here, you do apply semi-classical limit to find spectral curves. For example, uh, many of the work uh, Paul Norbury has uh, been doing was not to start from the topology, I mean, the uh, quantum curves and apply to topological recursion. He starts from these invariants, and they, ah, sorry, I forgot to mention, they also include Hurwitz numbers. Then um, find these uh, operators, and then uh, apply semi-classical limit to uh, find spectral curves. And then um, from here, indeed, you uh, try to find that uh, the, the procedure, the right procedure, which gives you this. Now, I said that uh, topological recursion uh, question mark square is that the question mark is applied to the question mark. So, uh, so topological recursion is uh, uh, assumed to do something here. And then uh, uh, this relationship from these invariants to spectral curves is a mirror symmetry. And then, uh, uh, but then uh, often, if you try from here to there, it is very difficult. Uh, coming through here is uh, slightly easier. So this is called art. Uh, no science in here from here to there. So uh, today, what I'd like to uh, focus on is to place everything in a well-defined geometric context so that we can understand the relationship between here and here. But uh, then, what are we doing in terms of uh, uh, invariance is totally unclear. So, as Wittgenstein said, if I don't have any language, I shouldn't talk about it. So the question would be, if you place in the geometric context, is there any direct path from here to there. So when you are given a spectral curve, can you get a quantum curve? Well, to do that, you have to give a mathematical definition of spectral curve, and then a mathematical definition of quantum curve. Then uh, under uh, uh, the uh, reasonably good <laughs> definition and the framework, yes, there is such procedure, which is called a conformal limit of Gaiato. So the purpose of this talk is to really explain this uh, uh, concept and then uh, place it in the geometric situation and then uh, uh, show how this construction goes. So that's what uh, uh, I would like to do. And then uh, let me just uh, start with the mathematical framework. So what is the uh, definition of spectral curves? Uh, this definition is not attempted to include uh, what uh, uh, Bertrand wa was talking about in the first uh, day. So many of um, his uh, spectral curves are not included. And then um, there are a lot of junks included here, which you cannot apply spectral, I mean, topological recursion at all. So a spectral curve, before that, I need to fix certain um, concepts, uh, certain objects. So C is a um, uh, smooth projective curve. defined over C. And then uh, I really wish we could do more about the genus zero case. Genus zero and the one that's very difficult for me. So genus is assumed to be two. 
at this moment. Um, so one of my graduate students and I uh, are working on the genus staircase with singularity. So smooth projective curve. Then um, uh, I would also uh, have to use um, a complex reductive group or a simple, um, a joint group. That's But most of the case, I just use SL2 as an example in this uh, talk. So a definition, a spectral curve is a uh, divisor <laughs> sigma inside in the cotangent bundle of this curve C. So this is a cotangent vibration in such a way that, that this induced map here is finite. And then I'm not assuming sigma to be non-singular, uh, not even... Uh, uh, irreducible, and they're not even reduced. So, so sigma can be very uh, bad from the point of view of application of the uh, spectral uh, uh, topological recursion business. But that, that's a definition. So it's uh, just a divisor which is finite, obviously. And then a quantum curve. Um, again, this is not attempted to uh, capture the physicist concept, but uh, uh, to us, this is simply a uh, cyclic with D module uh, defined over the curve C. So this is the uh, concept. And then uh, I can define the Gaiotto correspondence uh, going uh, in a one-to-one -one correspondence from here to the moduli space of such object. So now the uh, construction is a moduli to moduli uh, object. So now let me just uh, start uh, defining more carefully about uh, what do I mean by cyclic? Um, uh, <coughs> Sorry? Cyclic proof D module, people want to know now. Cyclic what? Uh, uh, RES. R-E-E-S. Uh, yeah, RES. Cyclic RES module, uh, D module. RES simply means that uh, I don't need an H bar dependence. And cyclic is what uh, uh, it appears in the Jan's uh, paper with the Maxim, and then cyclic. So, so what is a cyclic? Uh, 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 probably a common language, or common, not common. Uh, the word I don't understand is, uh, uh, so this is not a German word, right? <laughs> so so it, uh, they, they are called uh, an opa. So uh, the Wagner opa, or whatever. <laughs> Formal series in H bar. Polynomial in H bar. Has to be able to evaluate at H bar equal to 1. It's not formal not series. Right. So, uh, uh, risk part uh, today, I probably don't. Uh, uh, time to speak about so this part is necessary, but then um, uh, I would use uh, twister theory and then uh, dream connections where uh, this h bar has uh, values in p1, so so it is uh, uh, not a formal power series, right? Okay, so uh, um, uh, what do I mean by uh, a cyclic uh, uh, d module? So um, we'd like to consider um, v and then nabla an OPA, uh, which means that the V is a holomorphic vector bundle on the uh, on curve C, and the NABLA is a connection, holomorphic connection, where uh, this KC is a canonical sheaf, meaning that uh, a sheaf of holomorphic uh, differential form of uh, degree one, that's the only thing exists on the curve, and then uh, the with the following conditions. So uh, conditions, so V has a, a filtration, full flag filtration. So uh, let's uh, assume that, uh, say, this is equal to uh, rank of V is equal to R. And then uh, um, for the case of uh, doing uh, uh, Gaiotto's business, I do have to assume that uh, um, 
the determinant of the vector bundle is identified as a trivial bundle. So not only topologically trivial, uh, I, I do want to have a trivial uh, determinant. So V has a full flag filtration, which means that the zero is equal to F sub R, um, which is containing F R minus one, F R minus two, and then all the way F one, and then F zero is equal to V. So there exists such a uh, filtration. And then since you have a um, connection, you can talk about the connection uh, restricted to each Fi, which send Fi. Uh, so uh, naturally, it goes to uh, Fi minus 1 tensor case. Of course, uh, we don't know, but we impose this condition. So this is uh, not a strong condition, because Fi is contained in Fi minus 1. So this is called uh, uh, Griffith's transversality. which is a generic condition. So uh, each um, Fi is sent to the next one tensor Kc by this uh, connection. It's a condition for the connection. And then third is a, a rather strong condition. Um, if we consider the um, induced map for the quotient, so if uh, maybe i plus 1 uh, modulo Fi, uh, goes to Fi modulo Fi minus 1 tensor Kc. So if you consider this induced map, now if i plus 1 goes to Fi, Fi goes to Fi minus 1, therefore this uh, um, quotient makes sense. The condition we want to impose is that uh, this is OC module isomorphism. Now, why this is an OCI isomorphism? If you come here, so you apply the uh, um, connection to some section. And then uh, quotient means you are talking about the difference. Now, if you have a uh, um, difference of connections in the uh, uh, same vector bundle, the difference is always a uh, um, function or a <laughs> matrix. So, so differentiation part uh, goes away. So this is indeed an um, OC module, but uh, uh, the requirement is that it is an isomorphism. So this is a uh, definition of OPA. And then now, why is cyclic? Is because um, there is a cyclic vector uh, using this filtration in such a way that um, so just an uh, explanation of why cyclic. So it means that um, uh, this connection is indeed equivalent to defining order are globally defined uh, differential operator on curve C. So uh, differential operators are usually defined uh, locally, and then uh, that's how you use analysis. But uh, there is a concept that um, you can define dif uh, ordinary differential operator globally on this compact curve C, and then that. Um, uh, so that uh, has to be defined through the connection, but the connection has to have this cyclic structure. Which means that um, uh, you, you choose um, um, uh, uh, which way element in here, I think, or maybe maybe element here, uh, and then uh, uh, apply the uh, differentiation. So, so, so you choose a function f, and then you choose f prime, f double prime, and so on, f r minus 1. And then uh, you can make this as a local trivialization of this uh, vector bundle V using this uh, filtration. And then, therefore, the connection becomes a uh, <laughs> differential <laughs> operator. Now, <coughs> this kind of um, structure is always true for uh, any connection locally, but in this case, it is globally done. So that's a uh, part of the quantum curve. And the least uh, construction is that uh, you do uh, apply h bar in the uh, differentiation. So this is a, a, a situation. And then um, what I like to do is that I, I'm going to uh, define Gaiapo's limit in a minute. But then um, uh, yes, each spectral curve sigma goes over here to a connection uh, defined as this. But then uh, when um, um, we study this, the picture, the following uh, Geometric situations shows up. So 
indeed, as I mentioned, this is not only a point-to-point -point mapping. You do have a moduli space of spectral curves. But I do have to fix certain information here. And then uh, there is a, a larger moduli space. It's a holomorphic symplectic space. And then uh, um, how the Gaiotto's uh, conformal limit uh, mapping works is that uh, indeed you, uh, it's better higher up. There is a um, holomorphic embedding from uh, B to here, uh, let me call it uh, NB, NB is an image here, and then this is uh, just a biholomorphic map. So NB is in this uh, holomorphic uh, symplectic space, and then uh, this embedding gives you as a Lagrangian. So this is a holomorphic Lagrangian. Then what happens is that uh, this Galton uh, correspondence will send us to a different moduli space. So this is a, yeah, I'm going to define this moduli space, but uh, those who are curious, this is a moduli space of Higgs bundles. And then here you have a moduli space of holomorphic connections. So this is a, uh, uh, let me just uh, write as, so this is work here. So let me just use a notation M uh, drum. So this is a moduli of holomorphic connections on C, and then uh, with the group G, I was mentioning, and then G is the uh, SL uh, something. And then, um, so in this case, uh, you do have a nice uh, holomorphic Lagrangian, again, holomorphic Lagrangian, and which is indeed a moduli of opus. And then uh, the map I was talking about, say this uh, Gaiotto conformal limit, goes from this uh, holomorphic Lagrangian to another holomorphic Lagrangian as a biholomorphic map. So this is actually biholomorphic. Now, I have to mention, so, so here, uh, I'm going to define in a minute, but uh, this is a Hitchimodri space. So this is a holomorphic symplectic uh, manifold with a particular complex structure and then a particular holomorphic symplectic uh, form I'm choosing, which is actually uh, naturally coming from the underlying uh, spectral curve business. Here you do have a totally different naturally defined uh, uh, holomorphic structure and a different complex uh, uh, symplectic form. So these two spaces, indeed, uh, I'm also uh, uh, going to explain. There is actually a map from here to here. This is called the non-Abelian <coughs> Hodge homeomorphism. So these two spaces are homeomorphic. I do have to say a little bit of a caveat here. So uh, I'm going to explain in a minute what uh, I mean. but I. After I restrict these moduli spaces to a certain class, there is a homeomorphism. But the, the complex structures are totally different. So there cannot be any biholomorphic mapping. Yet, if you restrict to the Lagrangian, which is indeed uh, the moduli space of uh, uh, spectral curves, uh, maps to the uh, uh, moduli of opus. So this is not a point-to-point a, a -point kind of construction. You do have uh, this uh, biholomorphic map. Then um, we examined the Gaiotto's uh, conformal limit. It actually is not restricted to this particular uh, section. This section, N stands for Nigel. Everybody calls it uh, Hitchin section. So let's call it the Nigel se section. So, so th there is a, a canonical map from here to there. It's not unique. There are, if a genus of a curve G, then 2 to the 2 G, different choices of uh, such discrete choices or finite choices of um, holomorphic Lagrangians, uh, we choose one, uh, then um, you can just apply this. But then uh, it does not have to be here. 
this uh, conformal limit construction I'm going to explain can apply anywhere. So the question is the following. Um, if we are to think this is a natural situation, then how about other natural um, Lagrangians? Do they also go in a nice way? And the answer is yes and no. So the yes part is that uh, there is a moduli space of holomorphic vector bundles which are stable. And then a cotangent bundle forms an open subset here. And then for that case, as when I explain this, uh, the conformal limit, you'll see it's completely trivial that the Galtos map exists. And then it goes to, uh, by holomorphically, every fiber goes to here. However, uh, this uh, um, zero section of this cotangent bundle is never holomorphically mapped. So this one uh, goes to something, and then which is indeed the image of the non-abelian Hodge correspondence. So this one, uh, the, as I'm talking about a nilpotent cone, for those who know <laughs> the uh, word, I'm also go going to explain. So nilpotent cone maps to the, uh, uh, here, as by non-abelian Hodge correspondence. So this is only continuous topological subvariety. But uh, you do have a fibration, or to be precise, a projection of these fibers to here. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's more than continuous. Yeah, more than continuous, right. Yeah, yeah. That, that wiggly line is the issue in modulus. Yes, exactly. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, from the holomorphic point of view, they are <laughs> I, I don't mean it. they are singular in that sense. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, there are other um, something uh, um, closely related to uh, OPAS. They do go here. And then uh, that's also I explain in a minute. minute. But then um, what uh, happens is that the so um, Galato uh, correspondence uh, breaks down uh, very badly uh, when you do go to any other color here, um, other leaves. So 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 situation does happen. So so um. The reason um, we got interested in this is that uh, there is a conjecture by Carlos Simpson, um, which states that uh, this M drum, and then uh, uh, this is defined over the complexity of group G, uh, admits a um, holomorphic Lagrangian foliation. So, um, so this is 2008. So there is an expectation that uh, there is a uh, holomorphic Lagrangian foliation compatible with uh, the map, what we call variation of hot structures. So variation of Hodge structures actually uh, induces a map from uh, this uh, drum moduli space to here. So this is a VHS maps uh, uh, from uh, left to here. But uh, that is indeed mapping to the nilpotent cone, not the entire space. And then, uh, so uh, this is, uh, and I'm going to uh, explain every single thing. So this is already um, showing up the appearance of the variation of Hodge, Hodge structures. So um, here we are s uh, talking about uh, not exactly what the Maxim was uh, 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 explaining. We do not have any geometric uh, realization of this uh, connection. So whenever you have a connection uh, which is flat, uh, this is holomorphic, therefore automatically flat, um, we call it the uh, complex variation of Hodge structures, which means you do have some sort of filtration. Filtration does not have to be full flat, okay? And then uh, uh, Griffith uh, uh, transversality holds. Then what you have is a variation of structures. And then this uh, VHS map means 
whenever you consider a connection as a variation of Hodge structures, you go to the graded object. So gradation sends this to the other world. And then a compatible means that uh, many of them are indeed fibers of this uh, VHS. That's what uh, uh, Simpson is conjecturing. Here, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, corresponding uh, map, so like uh, all these things collapse here to a point, but here the corresponding uh, uh, op operation, you can still use variation of structures on this uh, moduli of uh, Higgs bundles, but the uh, uh, geometric expression is it ex actually it's a C star action. So there is a C star action. And then uh, you go to the C star action, parameter goes to zero limit. And that is uh, corresponding to the direction of structures. And then, uh, so uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, C star stable uh, sort of Lagrangians do come to one point. And then therefore, you cannot construct the Lagrangian foliation here uh, in the uh, moduli of polystable Higgs bundles. And then here, um, it's a completely reducible situation. So here, I don't have anything. So Simpson's conjecture is for the moduli of all local system, uh, holomorphic local systems. OK, so this is the kind of uh, uh, introduction. And then uh, let me go to the uh, uh, down to us. Uh, explaining every single time. So uh, I'm uh, since it is recorded, I don't want to say anything about uh, what are we contributing to this Simpson's conjecture. And then the Simpson's conjecture is motivated of using this structure for the geometric Langerhans correspondence. And then uh, so what uh, we would uh, see. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that, uh, yes, we want to use uh, birational geometry techniques to separate these Lagrangians out. Then you see this space has a holomorphic Lagrangian foliation. But of course, there is completely natural, well-known holomorphic Lagrangian fibration. So that is uh, uh, hitting vibration. So there is a map from here to here. Uh, it's a, a characteristic polynomial map. And then uh, generic fibers are non-singular abelian varieties. And then, uh, so we learned uh, from uh, Maxim Kontevich about the uh, Griffith uh, principle. So Griffith principle applied to here is that uh, once we make these uh, into chromophic Lagrangian, foliation, well maybe you don't need that even, the typical fiber hovering above the nilpotent cone, this is a context where spectral curve is hovering above base curve. So the same situation that uh, Bertrand uh, and then uh, Maxim explained exists in this direction. Therefore, we do expect a D module out of this context. And then, uh, so how does that D module behave? You do have to go to the Langlands dual, and then you'll see that uh, there is an equivalence between here and then that picture. That is what uh, I do believe that uh, Simpson has, uh, uh, was telling us in this paper. But uh, we are not going there yet. OK. so. Uh, let me just explain. Uh, so the purpose now is to explaining this uh, conformal limit of bio in a precise way. So to do that, I need uh, some definitions. So, uh, so uh, uh, please uh, forgive me to give you a full detailed definition. A Higgs bundle is a pair, so E and the phi, where E is uh, an holomorphic vector bundle. Then uh, the same uh, uh, thing I'm uh, asking, rank E is equal to R, and then uh, determinant is equal to trivial. And then uh, phi is a holomorphic uh, or OC module map from E going to E tensor KC. So connection has the same uh, uh, um, domain and then a target, but connection is uh, satisfying the Leibniz rule. So uh, this is OC linear map, so it doesn't satisfy any Leibniz. This is the li linear. 
all see it in here. So, um, and then uh, here I do impose the condition that the trace is equal to zero. So, in other words, phi is an element of the cohomology and the morphism of <laughs> zero E tensor KC. So, which means that uh, I'm at, uh, like a we can imagine um, this is an SLRC uh, bundle, and then end zero means that uh, I don't allow any trace here. So, that's uh, a pair. And then, uh, yeah, probably I don't have to say, so E phi is a stable, uh, semi-stable, polystable, um, these are the things uh, you can find in a, yeah, my time I have to read a textbook, but uh, these days uh, Google tells you definition. So there are um, three different layers of stability condition. Stable is uh, um, <coughs> you don't have any endomorphism. Uh, is a, a major consequence so that you can uh, define mo uh, modular space. Semi-stable is that uh, it's close to the uh, stable, but the stable objects are always open. So you want to close the space of stable objects, and you need a semi-stability. Polystable simply means that. Uh, it's um, a dex sum of stable object with certain degree conditions. So these are the, the three layers. Uh, if I have the time, I would uh, come back and give you the definition. But uh, then, uh, uh, depending on this, we do have a uh, um, uh, moduli of Higgs bundles, stable ones, and then uh, polystable ones, and then uh, also semi-stable ones. And then a uh, clear inclusion relation is that uh, polystable is included in uh, stable because polystable means a direct sum of uh, stable ones. Uh, the relationship between polystable and the semi-stable uh, is a bit uh, tricky. They are the same in one way of thinking. Uh, they are different in another way of thinking. But uh, as a set, they are the same thing. Ah, so you say it's closure? No, it's yeah. oh. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Don Zaki was saying that uh, when you use the chalk, you call it the chalk. And then when you use this, uh, maybe it's a penko. <laughs> Thank you, sorry, yes. Stable ones are inside the uh, polystable ones. And then uh, when you go to the semi-stable ones, um, you can uh, close up in the, of course, a uh, hitting situation, it is never a compact thing, but uh, like a vector bundle case, it is become compact. Okay, so we do have such uh, layers. And then, uh, uh, so what time? Uh, corresponding to, yeah, then, then that's the motivation of uh, introducing this. But I, I, I did mention, if you do have a uh, same vector bundle, and then if you have a, uh, uh, two connections living on V, then V1, sorry, number one minus number two becomes uh, um, such an endomorphism. People call it the Higgs field, which is a misnomer, I think. It has nothing to do with the uh, Higgs mechanism in uh, um, standard model, but. Dimension reduction. So, uh, a Higgs mechanism is that you s shift the origin of your group action to uh, uh, introduce a spontaneous symmetry breaking. D dimension reduction does that too, but it's not <laughs> producing any mass time. But anyway, so, so it's a dimension reaction of the Higgs field. And so, the uh, motivation of introducing is that uh, the difference is a connection. So, how we use this is that uh, once you identify from a spectral curve, to a connection, then the rest can be separated, I mean, obtained by adding element on the spectral curve. So modular like spectral curve is actually a vector space. So you can add things. And then in that way, you can span entire uh, OPA. So that is an idea. And then therefore, on, uh, this context here works. OK, so this is a, a definition of uh, X bundles, and then the correspond ah, correspondingly, um, we also uh, yeah we need uh, this uh, connection. Connection simply means that it's a holomorphic one, so um, it has uh, satisfies the holomorphic uh, Leibniz rule. It's a connection, holomorphic connection. 
then um, what uh, we can impose a similar condition is that the disconnection is irreducible or semi-simple or nothing. So irreducible means uh, the following. So s every holomorphic connection on the curve is automatically flat, curvature is zero, because there's no uh, uh, zero two form. Therefore, it induces the holonomy representation. So pi one of curve is in, uh, represented in the chosen complex group G. If the holonomy uh, representation sends the pi one into the um, Zariski dense subset of the group, it is called irreducible. And then uh, semi-simple means that it is a connection, which is, uh, again, in the holonomy, every holonomy is um, isomorphic to the direct sum of irreducible ones. So when you teach uh, representation theory, you always assume some simplicity so that uh, you can do something. But uh, pi one of C uh, is a, a finitely presented discrete, infinite, and then a non abelian group. So representation does not have to be semi-simple. So yes, uh, non-semi-simple representations do exist. So, so that is a con condition. And then uh, how it corresponds, irreducible corresponds to stable in this uh, matrix. So I'm going to define the matrix immediately. And simple corresponds to polystable. Uh, no condition. So nothing representing the semi-stability here. So uh, yeah, semi-stability, I, I, I do have to explain, but it's a, uh, uh, when you construct a modular space, you introduce what is called S equivalence of semi-stable object. And then this S equivalence uh, identification collapses uh, possible Lagrangians coming to the point. So this is a polystable representative of a whole bunch of family of S equivalent semi-stable object. That is a situation happening here, which is not happening here. And then, uh, so that's uh, why uh, uh, this was a difficult conjecture. This is a difficult conjecture, but uh, uh, understanding the Gautos correspondence, we would be able to say something. So this is the uh, uh, corresponding modular spaces. And then now I think I should mention, yes. Uh, yeah, this picture is gone. Uh, yes, uh, the definition of the Gautos correspondence. Then um, analysis of that. So it was uh, originally the conjecture uh, that uh, if you apply it to the um, spectral curve, you do get an upper was a conjecture. And then this conjecture was solved in a uh, completely general situation of the group, uh, just a simple uh, complex simple group, uh, a joint type by uh, Olivia Dumitrescu, Laura Fredrickson, um, Gergio Skilonakis, uh, Rafe Rafe Matteo, Andy Naisky, and myself. So uh, uh, first, I'd like to mention this uh, non-Abelian Hodge correspondence. Um, I don't have time to list all the people contributed: Donson, Hitchin, Colette, Simpson, and then the higher situation, more people, which is again so on. So non-Abelian Hodge correspondence, um, and to do explaining that, there is a Hitchin's discovery that the uh, uh, E phi, so this object, which is a polystable. In meaning that it's a direct sum of uh, isomorphic to direct sum of a stable object. Then, so this is not a definition, this is a theorem, not a definition. Um, this is equivalent to saying that, uh, uh, that so you can choose a um, Hamishian metric H so Hamishian fiber metric in uh, topologically defined uh, vector bundle E and then uh, whenever you have a, a complex vector bundle and then a Hermitian uh, metric you choose, there's a chain connection. So there's a unique chain connection. So chain connection means that it's a unitary. And then uh, zero one part is indeed the uh, bar operator comes with this original uh, vector bundle. 
So uh, unitary, yeah, unitary means that you can probably guess what it means. It's a metric is uh, fixed, unchanged, and then. Uh, uh, we consider phi as a C infinity uh, matrix valued matrix, of course, endomorphism matrix. One form. And then, uh, yeah, what I want to have. Usually, in my brain, I have something else. So phi. Uh, D H um, such that uh, so the stability condition so this uh, stability condition is uh, um, nonlinear PDE so curvature of this uh, um, chunk connection plus commutator of phi and then phi dagger of course uh, you do have a Hamisha metric you can talk about uh, matrix uh, matrix uh, uh, joint. Uh, and then this is equal to zero. Now this is equal to zero. I'm talking about the uh, degree zero case. And then uh, a d zero one applied to phi is equal to zero, which we expect phi is holomorphic. So this uh, uh, nonlinear PDE is equivalent of the stability condition. So um, uh, the, the stability in algebraic geometry happens to be the solution to the nonlinear PDE. So one thing I'd like to uh, remark is that uh, this equation is a uh, unitary gauge equivalent, I mean uh, invariant. So if you, so this is a real thing. So if you change a uh, unitary um, transformation, which is a gauge transformation of the uh, topological vector bundle, then the unitary uh, uh, gauge transformation doesn't change this. It changes uh, just a unitary thing. Conjugation, the same thing happens. So the equation uh, stays. And then, um, so this condition, two equations, is actually the same as the following. So you define this uh, a twist line. Unitary, you mean global unitary or local? Uh, well, global transformation. Yeah. yeah. You usually comes from the Hamishan metric. So if you define this to be the D plus one of zeta phi plus uh, zeta phi dada, so this is a new object then this condition is equivalent to this uh, um, the connection like object yeah in this it is in this in, indeed a, a real connection is flat for all zeta <coughs> is in c <system. coughs> so this is the uh, uh, now we are going to the twist of space um, so it is easily verify uh, this condition, the condition are uh, equivalent. Mm -hmm. And then a non abelian Hodge, so non abelian Hodge correspondence is a moduli space of Hitchin uh, from polystable, so this is a homeo, to the uh, completely reducible um, connections. So how it goes is that uh, you start from here, uh, E phi. Uh, since it is polystable, uh, this is uh, equivalent of choosing uh, topological. Uh, bundle H and then connection and then also phi satisfying with uh, uh, this uh, equation star which I just mentioned that uh, D of zeta where D of zeta sorry uh, stop loss my zeta doesn't look like zeta right <laughs> so C is 7 zeta should be 3 or what so, so this is equal to zero. Okay, then from here, what I want to do, from here, I take a zeta evaluated at the one, and then this decomposes into one zero part plus uh, zero one part. So, so um, it's a Hodge decomposition here. And then uh, zero, so since it is flat, zero one part is also flat. So therefore, uh, you can define V to be topological vector bundle with a new um, cauchy riemann operator. So you consider this as a cauchy riemann operator to introduce a complex structure, which I call V. Then, nabla, I can just uh, use, uh, not, uh, I don't need any bracket, just a one zero part, which is automatically, with respect to this complex structure, uh, this is a holomorphic connection. So from here, you have constructed the uh, complex holomorphic connection. So 
So this is a map called the non-Abelian Hodge uh, correspondence, right? So this is how it goes. OK, then uh, I can immediately uh, describe Gayoto's correspondence. Yes, yeah, so what is, uh, I mean, the map is naturally exist. But I'm this um, in a projective, homomorphic, these are very difficult. And then you can immediately understand that um, this doesn't extend to the semi-stable uh, object, which is not uh, covered in this picture. So Gaiato's conformal limit. <coughs> it uh, comes from uh, n equal to two supersymmetric gauge in four dimension, dimension reduction by one to the uh, three dimension. And then uh, there is a, a real parameter r. So that's a uh, uh, new th thing. So define a d of zeta r to be equal to the same context, d plus um, r over zeta phi plus r uh, zeta phi dagger. That's the definition. So zeta is the same as before. And then they impose that the condition zeta r uh, square equal to 0. So here, of course, uh, um, in this case, uh, corresponding uh, uh, Hitchens uh, semi uh, Sorry, no, no, no. Um, self duality equation. So this is a self anti I mean self dual equation of the gauge theory. Fd. Now, since uh, all that you're doing is you multiply real parameter to phi, that's all what he is doing. Therefore, it's r squared phi phi dagger is equal to zero. So that's a new equation you are solving. So you both. Shut up, please. <laughs> Doesn't listen to me. Sorry. <laughs> right, it does this only now. <laughs> Sorry. OK, so. Um, all right, then uh, uh, actually uh, conformally, and then conjecture he made is the following. So um, you look at the limit. Um, zeta goes to 0, r goes to 0, but it's scaling limit. So zeta over r is fixed to be equal to h bar. All this uh, zeta r under condition exists. Well, of course, he, he doesn't say in which context, right? Now, uh, I didn't uh, define the notion of Hitchin section. If E and phi belongs to the Hitchin section, <laughs> then the limit is an OPA. So that was a conjecture. So uh, uh, two conjectures. One is that the limit exists. So it's a scaling limit. So if you call the conformal limit. And then uh, uh, Hitchin section, if you apply to Hitchin section. So Hitchin section is a modular space of. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, I, I start with the uh, Higgs side. Higgs side, but then you curve. Yeah, yeah, so, so from Higgs side, then you construct the B. Yeah, so you start from the initial point, the limit, limit to your homomorphic curve. Yeah, so I initial uh, condition is uh, here. And then from here, you do uh, uh, produce uh, H, D, uh, E, and then uh, phi with the star. Then uh, you consider this new family. And then um, uh, you impose this condition, which means that you are deforming uh, this equation by R. And then uh, this uh, uh, scaling limit exists. And then if you apply to the Hitchin section, it is automatically an open. <coughs> so that's what uh, he said. 
and then uh, so the uh, since time is short, let me just simply say theorem is that uh, uh, it's true, um, but that's an uh, um, um, analysis result. But then um, let's for any group, I mean simple, uh, a joint group, uh, because we do have to use uh, constants. So, uh, yeah, uh, the proof, uh, uh, yeah, I was actually uh, going to give you a little bit of the proof, but uh, proof is that it is done in the uh, SL2, and then uh, bring SL2 situation into the complex uh, uh, simple group by constants um, embedding. But part B is true. Ah, yeah, yeah, only, only for the, you say AB? Okay, only part B to be true. Yeah, because uh, um, uh, limit uh, existence has not been done. And then, in particular, um, <laughs> strictly semi-stable, not stable points, um, even the definition doesn't make any sense. <coughs> no, 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 no. In this case, uh, 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 limit exists also proved in this particular case, right? So, f for the uh, um, hitting section, so for each section, limit exists and it is an open. Yes, that's uh, But the uh, point is, uh, where we go from here? And then um, let me just uh, uh, explain the following situation. Remark. So something is completely trivial. So consider E and phi in the uh, H moduli. And the E itself is uh, stable. And then uh, one one case, uh, phi is identically zero. Let's apply this situation. Phi is uh, identically zero. Then the equation is just f d equal to zero, right? Because I'm choosing phi to be equal to zero. F d equal to zero is yes, very well known. So here h has to be the Hermit Einstein metric. So if you choose an uh, element Einstein metric, then um, the curvature satisfies the uh, uh, Einstein equation. But uh, we are saying that the determinant is trivial. So first Jan class doesn't exist. So element Einstein equation simply means that the curvature itself is identically zero. So Hamishan, <laughs> Einstein, you solve it. Which means that this is all well known by Narasimhan Sechadri, right? So you do have, uh, so let me call this, uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, existent, uh, uh, sorry, exist, yeah, yeah, then, uh, and define uh, V nabla inside the uh, uh, durable uh, drum module. Yeah, and then um, uh, important thing is that the V, I'm using the different letter V and E, yes, V has to be deformed. V is n almost never equal to E. Uh, well, of course, I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you a lie. So, Hamishan Einstein, which means since FD is automatically zero, D10 is a holomorphic connection, right? So, that's what uh, Narasimhan Seshadri says. So, uh, E0 goes to E itself, and then uh, uh, a holomorphic connection, Narasimhan Seshadri. And then, uh, so this is a point on the um, um, uh, drum moduli. And then it's actually a stable situation. And this is also point in the uh, stable moduli. Then this is exactly so. So, uh, so this is the, uh, uh, let me call it Gaiotto map. Gamma is equal to this. Then gamma of E0 uh, in this case is equal to non abelian Hodge map. So, let me call this uh, nu of E0. So, this uh, guy correspondence is uh, completely trivial here. Right. Yes. So uh, in this particular case, right. In this particular case, indeed, uh, what we are talking about is a uh, uh, cotangent fiber on the hitching side, and then, uh, that actually goes to the uh, uh, um, corresponding map very easy. So one, two, if you have E phi, still E is stable. 
and then a phi is anything in this case, no constraint at, at all. Then, uh, yeah, probably I have time to uh, write everything. You look at this equation. Still, you use uh, Hermit Einstein equation uh, metric. Then this is equal to zero. Here, I'm choosing uh, Hermit Einstein once and forever. So there's a uh, 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 well defined object here. But I'm going to make r goes to zero. So the equation splits. It's again trivial. Because r times phi, r goes to zero, is equal to zero. And the zero case we are already done. Which means, uh, in this uh, example, all that you're doing is that the um, gaioto of e phi is actually equal to gaioto e uh, zero plus phi itself. So this is a connection I can add Higgs field to make it as a Linabra. <coughs> so this is, in some sense, uh, you just uh, make a linear uh, transformation. And then that is, of course, by holomorphic. So, so in this context, it is completely trivial. And then a the second uh, remark, which I now lack in time. If E phi belongs to a uh, MHPS, so I said that the C star action exists. C star action is that uh, if you have E phi, you just multiply E and then T times phi. So this is a C star action. Um, if it is a C star fixed point, then again, uh, let me say uh, um, intuitive thing. C star action invariance means that uh, this R can be multiplied to each phi and phi dagger. But the phi doesn't change, which means you are introducing unitary gauge transformation to eliminate that. So if you uh, um, include it in here and then use a, a C star invariance, the equation is uh, exactly the same as before. But then, then, then that equation is established with the unitary gauge transformation. Uh, there are a little bit of a caveat here, but uh, intuitively speaking, it's already, again, the um, non-Navillian Hodge correspondence. So in this case, again, gamma is equal to non-Navillian Hodge correspondence. But then uh, the uh, conjecture looks like it's no, it is not. If so, for if E is not stable <laughs> as a vector bundle, then no matter how you choose a uh, uh, Hamiltonian metric, this can never be equal to zero, right? Because uh, uh, if it is zero, then it is stable. So this is not, not zero. Now look at the equation. This is non-zero in general. R you are going to make zero. Then non-zero plus something going to zero can never be equal to zero. What should happen? We're not changing phi. This dagger is changing, which means metric is blowing up. And therefore, in general, it is uh, convergence is totally non-trivial. And that you can manage. But how do you manage? So far, we are appealing only to use this trivial case and then shift. That's been only done. But then uh, where you cannot uh, do this is that uh, when you look at the new potent consist fixed point, which is purely semi-stable, then even Gaioto correspondence cannot be formulated. Yet Simpson's conjecture says that there should be Foliation. So what uh, I uh, uh, wanted to talk about more is that, uh, yes, there is a geometry. You can blow up uh, that uh, point, and then um, you can construct a new base of the um, uh, holomorphic Lagrangian foliation. It will not become holomorphic Lagrangian uh, vibration, unfortunately, yet because the base space is very highly singular, not even irreducible. And then uh, it has a very uh, uh, varying uh, 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 dimension of the fibers. But then uh, theorem is for uh, every uh, a Simpson conjecture, the uh, uh, Lagrangian leaf, uh, SL2 case only, SL2, there is a um, closed subscheme of this uh, base in such a way that the fiber of this closed subscheme is exactly equal to that uh, Lagrangian. Uh, for the many cases, that subscript is just a point, but it's not always a point. So that is what the, uh, we are working on right now. Anyway, it's time. So 
So it is true for every H bar, and then therefore you do get a family of uh, uh, connections. So it, it depends on H bar. So you multiply H bar to that one, you get a dream connection. H. So we are not going e there yet, right? <laughs> That's a natural question. Every, a lot of people are working on that. And the interesting thing is that uh, uh, particular examples have been st studied by uh, Florian Beck, uh, Murad Alim, and uh, uh, Laura Fredrickson. So that is really coming from the actual variation of structures of open Caribbean. But I <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. At this moment, I cannot have any answer to your question that, that way. Yes. So, uh, yeah, or before the situation, for example, mm -hmm. and then, uh, is the uh, next thing. While the situation is uh, uh, totally out of context, I can control at this moment. So, sorry, uh, I guess more you mean that it is not semi-state. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, uh, ah, same mistake. Right, purely unstable. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, purely unstable. And then, of course, uh, yeah, like a uh, stable case is covered already. So not even that. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Then, of course, uh, if we cannot find therefore, equation becomes non trivial and then the bubbling has to be controlled. But that's analysis, yeah. Uh, the C number flow or the, the renormalization flow, and when you said Gaiotto's flow to a conformal point, so there's some physical theories which are not conformal, and then there is a <laughs> flow from the east <coughs> which gets them to a conformal point. Is that is that related? Uh, the, your question is addressed to the wrong speaker. Okay. And then uh, but maybe a mathematical <coughs> <work. coughs> sort of a remark since you have, so what you're looking at is sort of di different Malacaton equations, right? And some are, or, or master equations, your, your uh, whatever, the S plus, uh, I'll call it S plus S bracket S is zero. But then you're in a situation where you have a C star action, and then the natural thing would be a quantum master equation, where you take sort of the, the C star action into account, so you would have one more term in your equation. Maybe that's actually what you're doing with gauge fixing. So the, 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 f the equation should be like of the form ds plus 1 half ss uh, plus delta s is equal to zero, where delta is a, an operator that comes from the C star action. So uh, ag again, probably uh, the question is asked wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I have no answers to your uh, questions.